All right, guys, welcome to Wide Awake News Radio. Charlie McGrath along with Eric Lovely on this third day of January 2013. Uh, I want to welcome all the listeners from Rinse Radio audience. And uh, if you're listening and not in the chat you chat room, you want to join the folks in there, go to wideawakenews.com, click on the Wide Awake Radio button. And, of course, welcome all uh, you fine Oracle Broadcasting listeners as well. Uh, Eric Lovely, I'm going to turn it right over to you because this is your hour to shine, my friend. <laughs> and I'm seeing in the chat room, I'm seeing in the chat room, they're ready for an Eric or yeah, for an Eric rant. Now, usually if we do that later in the program, uh, I, and the, when, when we did this last week, uh, part of it ended up getting cut off. And I don't know if that's uh, accidental or what, but uh, uh, how are you, my friend? How was your New Year's? How was your Christmas? Well, you know, I I can't say that, uh, you know, I exactly celebrated what m- most people call as Christmas, but that's a really long subject to get into. Um, the, you mean the, the bastardization of the holiday into this uh, well, the whole, uh, commercial the whole, yeah, consumerism well, the thing, and you know, if you want to talk about where Christmas really came from, it has nothing to do with uh, the Bible and Jesus and so on and so forth. God, you know, Jesus, the, the whole idea of Jesus being born in the winter is ludicrous, according to all the data that's available. So you know, March, we could wasn't that. it? Yeah, he, he was born uh, as he went into the fall. Uh, and whatnot, and people were harvesting goats and so on and so forth. It was harvest time, and so actually, I think it was the end of spring, uh, moving into fall, uh, out of summer. Really, is what you're talking about. But that's a really long subject, and we, you know, people are looking for a rant, and there there may be one. Okay, Uh-oh. but but it it might be a slow bubble because first we have to get through the trees of confusion. Okay, <laughs> the forest of confusion. I'm with you. <laughs> As we enter the physical cliff, okay, those individuals who want to talk about the physical cliff, who want to talk about what came from the physical cliff, okay, there was absolutely no problem at all whatsoever. There was going to be a vote that came to be, okay, that would allow them to spend more money, okay? A a junkie who gets the vote on whether or not he gets more crack isn't going to vote not to give himself more crack, all right, this, this this is this is quite it's ludicrous for anybody even to talk about it. But the but the things that were included into the bill, the tax increases that that were actually in the bill, and the surrendering of, of of spending cuts, all of the spending cuts that they promised you out of this super committee that came forth with twelve people, all were all were redacted, That's right. all were thrown in the trash. Okay, all gone. So let's not even go there. But wait, what wait is, a minute, Are we, we we're talking about the fiscal cliff here, right? We're talking about that that legislation that that garbage that cost seventy seven percent of the households in this country uh, an extra fifteen hundred bucks. That one, yes, as well as we could go even further into talking about the ludicrous stuff that was included in the bipartisan bill and so forth. But the crisis, the crisis, the all oh, woo moment at the end is what it, it, it is what keeps you from looking at what they actually signed. Oh, my God, oh, my God, it was the last crisis. We went down to the 12th hour, and Jack Bauer swooped in with his briefcase and his shotgun, threw the bill on the table. We all signed it and bought a bing. Everybody was saved. But they don't talk about the crap that was in it, the ridiculousness that was in it. But we're not going to either because this is all a diversion. We're also not going to talk about the Sandy Brook individual, okay, or the Sandy Hooker. I can't remember what the what the school is, okay. We're not going to talk about how the guy doesn't exist. We're not going to talk about that he's supposedly on a, a medical uh, uh, medical treatment and receiving pharmaceutical drugs, and and no one on the planet can say that this is happening. There is no doctor, there is no pharmacist can produce documented evidence that he was on any kind of medication over the last three years. You can't find that he was actually going to school for the last three years. You can't find an individual that even could say that they saw him for the last three years. And the only individual that the FBI claims he could see him that he was living with was so conveniently shot in the face before the crime ever took place. So we won't go there. We won't talk about all the hypocrisy and the diversion of what that's for. Because what all that is really for, ladies and gentlemen, is for this one thing. This is truly what I believe all of these distractions were for. And this may incite another rant, not only by me, but by Charlie. The reason why is because Naomi Wolf, the author, is the individual they're attempting for you not to look at. Why? Why is Naomi Wolf? Because you will find out that Naomi Wolf filed a Freedom of Information Act along with other editors, other news journalists, and concerned public with the federal government. What was this Freedom of Information Act going to entail? What was it? What was it according to? It was according to the Occupy. It, it, it was dealing with Occupy Wall Street and how the police coordinated, and so on and so forth. And on December 28th, with all the distractions, after everything was done, the Freedom of Information Act came out and hit the surface, and it was finally approved because they could not hold it back anymore. 
And, you know, the telephone lines are open as you hear this, 877-342-6673, because I want to know what you think. Here's what the Freedom of Information Act divulged to you, and I want more people to listen, and I want more people to investigate this and bring more information to the table, because only part of the truth is here. We need more work. There are more blockades in this Freedom of Information Act. Here you go. Basically, that uh, the FBI and the Department of Homes, Homeland Security created a committee merging the powers of the Department of Homeland Security and the FBI into one body. They then expanded that com committee to include non-governmental NGOs and the banks, the Federal Reserve Bank. What did this committee meet to do? The committee met to organize the response to the Occupy Wall Street. It has now been confirmed that every police action and brutality taken onto the streets done to the Occupy Wall Street individuals was a collusion action voted on and implemented by your government in direct embed with the banks. It's provable. They clearly went into the streets with their own plan and beat them down. Now, here's another interesting fact under this uh, Freedom of Information Act to go along with this. Here's a newsflash for you, ladies and gentlemen. The morning of the Freedom of Information Act being filed by Naomi Wolf and these individuals, the committee got together and redacted a portion of their plan. Do you want know a portion that that plan was? Six assassinations of major Occupy Wall Street involvement and creators. Now, this is the reality. Now, whether or not anybody wants to believe it, whether or not people want to talk, it's out there. I want you to research it. I want you to prove it wrong because there's a Freedom of Information Act all rooted around Naomi Wolf, and you can find it. And there isn't a problem with digging for this information. How long the information is going to be there, I don't know. This well, is do, you have, hey, do you have a link on it? Uh, actually, if you go to Max Kaiser, somewhere on the Kaiser Report webpage, and because he's the one that first talked about it on the Kaiser Report in his latest program, uh, Rule of... Uh, rule of fraud or something like that dictator of fraud i can't remember what his latest video that was actually out and that's where you'll find the first nook he actually talks about the freedom of information act and the violence that took place on the occupy wall street individuals the, the, he also talks about the redactions and you if you go and you follow this story you will find enough information hopefully that will lead you to this freedom of information act piece where they talk about all of this information there is an actual committee. Um, uh, I can't remember who's, who's in on the committee. Remember the group that they put together and they were businessmen and they've now given them badges and they've given them guns, but they're volunteers. They're, they're an organization. I yeah, can't remember. Yeah. Their uh, it, in fact, it, it was uh, Some, uh, on Ventura's program, wasn't it? Yeah, it, yeah. They are included in this committee. Okay. This, is, this committee, this merger is the complete realization that you live in a fascist marxist totalitarian nation it doesn't I'm, matter what you think what you believe or what you want to call them when business and government power merge to take action against a third party it's called fascism and you can break it down any way you want and now if you look at Glenn Beck and Michael Savage and others are starting to talk about creating a nationalist party. Okay? A nationalist party for the good of the nation, for the good of the flag. They're creating an actual nationalist party. Okay? It, 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 Michael Savage has come out now professing all kinds of crap about a nationalist party. Okay? These things are not... <sighs> They're so engineered for the individual. The information is there. It is very difficult for me to, you know, to, to do these things and, 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 and for me to talk about these things because now it is becoming to the point where if you look at new legislation, if you look at the gun ban legislation, if you look at these things, these are the final steps. I mean, a gun ban legislation. It says right in the gun ban legislation... Holy cow, Eric, you ranted right through the first segment. We're going to be right back with a very uh, uh, heated Eric Lovely and more Wide Awake News Radio in just a minute. Hang tight. Welcome back to Wide Awake News Radio. Charlie McGrath along with Eric Lovely. Uh, if you're if you're listening and not in the chat room, head to wideawakenews.com. Click on the Wide Awake 
radio microphone in the right hand corner of the screen that'll take you into chat uh, you can join the 50 or so folks we have in there now during the break i dropped a link in uh that had to do with uh, what eric was telling us about uh this is a an article by naomi wolf now this isn't this isn't the freedom of information act request or uh eric the uh, uh the information that came out in that freedom of information act this is an article she wrote that appeared in the guardian uh, how the fbi coordinated the crackdown on occupy and guys read it i mean you know it's it's too long to read uh, right here on the air but uh, if you were listening in Justin TV, then you heard me recite some of it. But, I mean, it, Eric, I, there's no, there's absolutely no doubt that and, – and you know what? Here's the thing. I, I'm not surprised at all, and, I, and I'm sure you're not either. Th this is exactly what you and I and many others have been talking about uh, since, uh, since we've been doing this, that they're not building out this security uh, state – in order to protect you from terrorism. Every time you see, <coughs> excuse me, every time you see a, a joint terrorism task force breaking up some would be, you know, what was it, the uh, the Cleveland Five or whatever, they were Baltimore Five, whatever. Uh, anytime they have a chance to, to put some idiot in front of a camera and call him a terrorist and then drag the, uh, the uh, uh, joint terrorism task force or the FBI or or whatever out to show that they're uh, fighting terrorism. It, these things are not set up, in my opinion, Eric, I think you're on board with me on this. They're not set up to defend us against, you know, the next Osama bin Laden. They're not set up to uh, protect us against uh, Mexican drug cartels coming up here and killing people. They're set up to keep the people corralled. They're set up to keep surveillance on the populace. And if you read this article, the fusion centers, the DHS, all these alphabet agencies that have spent this nation into oblivion building out the security industrial complex are turning on the people of this nation. Why? Because our economic situation is deplorable. They understand this. You know, it, it's the working stiff who still has a job right now, who still has a, a place that he shows up, punches a time card. And, and can still uh, go home and, and have the game playing. This is the guy that's in the absolute dark. You know, and, and this person is more than likely going to end up on the wrong side of this equation because eventually when this all comes crashing down, Eric, you know, these and they don't need the fusion centers and the billions and trillions of dollars of security apparatus and all these alphabet agencies to protect the, the country from Occupy Wall Street. They don't need it to protect themselves and their banking special interest from Occupy Wall Street. They are set up to protect uh, themselves against a mass populace that has been completely and totally deceived and is really, really angry. Eric? Well, man, see, see, here's, the, here's my problem, and here, here's what I try to convince people. Because propaganda, is, the, the way propaganda is disseminated, because of the way advertisement and everything is, is nuts and bolts built around Sigmund Freud's work, okay, around the way the human mind works, I can tell you, just as in the first revolution, 70% of the population is not going to be there for you. They're not going to get in the way. They're not going to do anything, whether they got a job, whether they don't got a job, none of that matters, okay? It is the propaganda and the way that they make decisions based on how they've been programmed and responses. Now, they may go berserk, they may become a flash mob here or there over food and so on, but you have only 30% of the population pool that the government is also applying money and pressure to that pool. Businessmen, entrepreneurs, independent individuals, they're swaying the alpha males to their side by buying them into the actual system of fascism. Okay, this is the way it works. So your pool of individuals is between 10 to 20 percent that you're actually going to be able to draw upon to that's physically going to do anything. This is the reality of how the human mind works. And so many people want to they want to tree hug and they want to talk about all this crap. But our forefathers, our forefathers was aware of, of, of this type of work being done, these type of theories being used, and they understood it and they openly talked about it. 
they talked about the occupiment of games of the ball and, and how the world and government attempts to confuse you and how these different um, uh, Fabians, as they called them, would use different things to distract the population, lulling most of them to sleep. That's what led Jefferson to say, therefore, the small minority righteous of us must stand up and be ever vigilant and never surrender. That was the reason those things were said. People don't understand what's going on now because it's not just one attack, okay? It's not the crap that was passed in, you know, overnight. Oh, we saved the planet with this physical cliff crap. The, the bad things in that, they're bad. The bad things that are in Obamacare that's kicking in, just like most people don't realize that three days ago, they cut the check a half a billion dollars to generate Obama's private army that went into effect January 1st, people. Okay, the check has been cut. He has been paid. That is a reality. And at the same time that the check was cut and the check has been paid, you see gun legislation. What does the gun legislation say? Let's talk about the grandfather clause, okay? We're not going to talk about all the people who are going to get sh shied upon, and they're not going to get crap. Let's talk about the grandfather clause, okay? It's an application. I've told you about these words before. You will have to file an application for a trusty grandfather clause to allow you to maintain your guns, okay? And right in the application, it says that you, by signing this application, by full oath or affirmation, will abide by all clauses in the gun legislation. What does that mean? The clause where it says upon your death you forfeit every single firearm you own to the government, no questions asked. That's what it says. We'll be right back after these minutes. Eric Lovely, welcome back. Wide Awake News Radio, third day of January 2013. I feel like reading this whole thing. Well, that's up to you. It's your show. We got a half hour. It's <laughs> I, I mean, did you want to jump in? I mean, because I, first of all, I'm trying to go. Let me. This is from that link I dropped it, guys, into the chat room. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to read it yet, you know, read it after the program. But but read it and then go on the reproduced uh, uh, here in easily searchable format link that's in the second paragraph and download that as well. Because Eric's right. This probably this this was posted on the 30th of December, uh, just a few days ago. But. Uh, yeah, I mean, this, this is this is terrifying. There's no other ways to describe it. Well, you know, people should really get into the article and then, you know, dig around and and find out. Uh, you know, I like you you actually read off the name of the committee, yeah. And it's it's an alliance group, and and, right. and people need to understand the reason terrorist. Okay, terrorist means that you are enacting terror activities either by thought or action. OK, in other words, voice being thought, you wrote it down on paper or by action. In other words, physically shooting someone, taking kidnap, something like that. OK, against a power structure to implement ideological change. OK, now, if you understand that to be what a terrorist is, then look at the committee. Well, who's making the decision? The government and the banks. You are deemed a terrorist against the actual power center. That's why the bank said so. You see, because they are the power center. It isn't you. Okay? The whole idea of the word terrorist being used, you should, you should be tired of being angry about this word being applied to you. You should understand what it means. They're telling you exactly what they mean. You are against the banking system, which is the power center of this world and this nation. If you act or speak out against us, you are a committing an act of terror against us, the rulers. They told it right to your face. It's always been right in your face. Charlie? Well, I, I mean, what do you want me to do? Yeah, this is, <laughs> this is the boot. Uh, you know, I, I, it, it's the same thing. You know, I, I know I, I throw it back to you at, at odd moments, but, you know, people... To, to, to grasp this information, and, you know, and I was having a conversation uh, today about this uh, with, with a group of people, you know, including close friends of mine. I also had it with my neighbor, uh, who's a really close friend of mine, uh, you know, uh, and, and his wife. And, and, and we were talking about the situation, and she was literally ill. She looked like she wanted to vomit. She looked like her face was just caving into her soul. And she looked like she just wanted to gurgitate all over the place. You know what I mean? And, 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 and she said, why? She just looked at me and said, why? And I said, because human beings don't understand that a percentage of your population is born with no conscience. 
They're born with no morals. They're born with no empathy. They're born with no sympathy. They do not care. What do you think the word, the word evil means? And because they have been the best at screwing one person or another over out of whatever they have to, that's how they got elected into power. And your, your, your news media, hat in hand, disgusting degenerates of another kind who married right along with them to allow it to happen. And it hasn't happened in the last five years. It hasn't happened in the last ten years or two decades or five generations. It's been continuing to happen for nine to twelve generations within our own borders and for the last thousands of years of human evolution or human life on this planet. It's time people get a grip and start understanding the evil in Hollywood. Let me, let me ask you a question. Go ahead. E you look at evil. evil. You look at Hollywood. Mass murderers, killers, so on and so forth, okay? What good does it do when the rapist is on top of you and you have no more fight left in you to beg him to stop? See, that's where you're at. You don't understand that. You don't get it. You think there's still time on the clock, okay? But the rapist has, has your, your undergarments around your ankles. You're on the floor with two broke arms, okay? And he's sitting on you, and you are expecting to look up at your rapist and say, please, Mr. Rapist, please don't rape me. It'll be okay. I'll forget I ever saw your face. You, you, why? Why would he not go ahead and follow through? He's evil, okay? Therefore, you're, you're asking these evil dirtbags that sit in your state houses, that sit in your governor's office, that sit in your sheriff's office, that run your court system, that you call police officers, that you call federal senators, that you call federal house of representatives, that you call the filthy, stinking, degenerate president of the United States, okay? They're all evil. They're degenerates. You created a degenerate atmosphere. You turned schools and everything else over to degenerates. And what, you have somehow a mystification as how come degenerates excel in this world and degenerates run and everything? It's because you sit on your laurels. You sit at home. You keep thinking that there is some peaceful pacification, some bone that you can throw these people, some law that you can write down on paper, Glass-Steagall and every other law you've ever passed, they've broken them all. Consciously, you can look at world news articles where the banks over the 90s, over the, the early 2000s, and even in 2008, they were laughing and they were flabbergasted how they were getting away with so many atrocities, economic atrocities, and what they were doing to the American people. That's because you didn't go down to their house and drag them out in the street and arrest them for treason and then hang their sorry crackhead self without trying to say any curse words. You know, I don't want to get lectured, but that's where it really is. <laughs> it's because you said, oh, they're human beings. We have to feel for them. There's some way to rehabilitate them. Oh, we'll just pass some more pieces of paper. And you know how you know how those pieces of papers are, are just stop crime, you know? Pieces of grab yourself a notebook. And when the when when the bad guy comes, fling your notebook out the door and see how many pieces of paper stop him from killing you. I mean it's ridiculous. And people tell me to calm down and so on and so forth. I'm not angry. I'm passionate, and I'm in what I call impassionated, but it's not even a word. I just made it up. It's because it's a Don I, King word. I, I am attempting to draw upon a spirit of liberty and send that passion out over the airways and light a kindle in your butt that's listening to light a fire to understand what the time is on the clock. You know, and a lot of people say, you know, a lot of people agree with me. A lot of people don't agree with me. You know, the, the bills, the legislation is in front of your face. The big push is here. Okay. They, they are coming. Okay. They're, they're not giving any ground. They're not compromising. You are. Okay. And you become poorer and poorer by the day. And every single day they print more money and you become poor. So you can't buy the things that you need that's going to help you resist. Do you understand? Do you see what is happening? They told you this 60 years ago. The plan was to invade from Russia with infiltrating agents to take over the school system, to spread propaganda, to convince you to spend more money than you had to make you too poor to resist the one world takeover of a single world government. 60 years ago. It's manifesting itself right in front of your face right now. 
You can choose to see it or not. That's the bottom line. Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know, Eric, I, I, you are passionate, and I understand that. And I and I actually appreciate that. Um, but I, I guess, I, you know, who are you talking to? I mean, I, are, are you... Here, here's what I'm talking to. Here, I, I, I'm going to take a whole other page. I'm going to do something that nobody ever thought I would. You got a hey, minute. You got a minute before hey, this break. Muslims, Muslims out there, you know, Allah Akbar and all that other stuff, okay? And you pray to your God. You have faith in your God. You believe in your God, all right? Well, two-thirds of the Muslim nation has now been conquered by a debt-based system. What is one of the first rules of your Muslim religion? That debt and usury is a killable sin. It is, a, it is an offense that you can be exterminated from the face of the planet. So why are you letting them do it? How is this a Muslim winter? Okay, all these people talk about this Muslim spring. How is it a Muslim spring? The, the, the things being indoctrinated into the countries that Muslims don't know. We lost Eric. We'll be right back with Eric Lovely. More Wide Awake News Radio in just a minute, guys. Hang tight. All right, guys, welcome back to Wide Awake News Radio, final segment of this first hour with myself, who's not doing much talking, and Eric Lovely, who is uh, on fire uh, tonight. Uh, coming up in the second hour, Kristen and Megan is, uh, is joining us, uh, and we're probably going to continue on. Uh, she's a, a, a former service member, and we'll probably continue on on the same theme. Uh, but uh, So make sure you, you stay tuned after, uh, after this break and, or after this last break of the first hour, and we'll be back with uh, Kristen and Megan. Eric, all right. Uh, you know, the Naomi Wolf article showing they're they're going after Occupy. That that Freedom of Information Act. That information is somewhat dated, right? I mean, we're 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 uh, a year since that, or or better, since the collaboration of uh, of uh, corporate special interest and government fascism, as you so rightly called it. Uh, but this is past. That that's that's occurred. But if we look at current legislation. It's, I mean, you you could set them side by side and see the progression of what's coming next, right? Oh, a hundred percent, absolutely. But see, here's the other thing. You know, people say, "Well, it's the past." No, 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 no. It's so far an unprosecuted crime. Right. No, no. I don't mean it's a past to ignore it. I mean, this has occurred. This collaboration is in yeah. full force. It took a Freedom of Information Act to find it out, but it's ongoing. They're making plans. They're you know beta testing. They're, they've uh, the, the fusion centers and all these uh, other uh, apparatus have been put into place. They're starting to use them and figuring out how to use them. So the next thing we, we look at is what? This massacre uh, at Sandy Hook, followed by immediate gun control legislation. In fact, you and I were talking about uh, this Illinois uh, legislation that even goes further than the national legislation that's being talked about, which is they're going to take everything. You know, if it's a semi-automatic, if it's a high-capacity round— you don't. There's no grandfathering. You have a limited window. You can turn it in or face prosecution. I mean, this is the next step: is to disarm the people. Uh, you know, like I said, all this agency, all this effort, all these resources were not uh, put into place to combat only walk, Occupy Wall Street, right? That that is a a blip on the radar. Occupy is a blip on the radar. You know, they. I I truly believe they understand. The times we're heading into and uh, the need to protect themselves against a, a populace that's, like I said, plenty mad. Oh, it, you know, if you look at it from their point of view, OK, if you actually sit down and take a moment and you say and you, you assume the role, tell yourself, OK, I'm a bloodthirsty piece of crap banker uh, who wants to, you know, uh, do I want to continue being this banker with all this power and this authority? Yes. So what do I have to do to keep it? You see, this is the thing. The NGOs, everybody gets all these think tanks. Everybody's angry with these think tanks about, well, the think tanks are saying to suppress the people and, and to lock them up and to put them in the concentration camps. Well, you see, you don't understand. The, the think tank has came up with a conclusion based on the data it was given. Okay, The data it was given is, hi, we're the bankers. We're in charge. How do we stay there and who are our enemies? So everything that the think tank said was correct. People who like, who have faith in, in a god, people who believe in a religion, people who believe in independence, people who believe in firearms, people who believe in their constitution. You guys are all, we are all enemies of the bank. There is no two if and, you know, there's no two ways about it. That, that, that's who we are. We are the terrorists, okay? Because presently you're confused. 
you can't if you were in charge you couldn't be a terrorist against your own authoritative rule because that you're the sovereign you are we the people okay so if you're deemed a terrorist then you must be terrorizing some other group that's in charge i mean this is this is it's really quite simple and these legislations are moving forward now and and you talk about these things but why with this information now being presented you know i can guarantee you what should happen is in the next month that you should have every single state Every state's attorney, you should see people filing into the state's attorney's office. You should see affidavits being written and signed. You should see oath and affirmation being sworn out. You should see these FBI agents, these banksters, and everybody being – federal felony arrest warrants for treason should be, it should be issued in every single state for them. It's not going to happen, ladies and gentlemen, because they control things and you either don't have standing or a judge isn't going to – approve such a thing or if the fbi or some local cop even thinks he can arrest somebody he will be told by the district attorney that we will not file charges okay this is the reality your avenues of success now what should you be doing you should then be attacking your own attorneys your own district attorney's office in your states you should be attacking your own governors your own state officials right now we are doing it here in our state. We are attempting to pressure the sheriff and so forth to issue warrants for uh, anyone attached to and involved with upon evidence uh, um, uh, pro um, procurement to be issued warrants for arrest. Anyone involved with this community. What did, what did your sheriff say? Well, the sheriff, the sheriff basically says that he, he, is, he is behind it, but he can't go outside of his jurisdiction, which I know is true. If they ever come here, he'll arrest them. If the warrants are issued, if the judge will back it, he will carry out his duty to we the people, and he will arrest the bankers, the FBI agents, whoever they are. But the problem is it's one county. Nobody cares about this one county. But if you start making it 50% of the states that these agents can't operate in because they will be arrested for treason. See, this is the difference. You should be pounding on your doors locally. The, the, you, should be, you have the evidence in front of your hand. The Freedom of Information Act is the evidence. Because, ladies and gentlemen, treason is very simple. You only need two things. They need to knowingly and willingly act against the power structure and interest of we the people, the Constitution. The Freedom of Information Act proves it dead rights. Caught with their pants down. Hand in the cookie jar. Pure fascism. Complete contradiction, knowingly and willfully working against you and your rights. Guilty as charged. Hang from the neck upon, uh, until dead at the local intersection. Okay? It's an open and shut case. It's, it, it, they admitted to it. They gave out the freedom of information and admitted to it. Treason isn't that difficult. You just have to understand what it is. Now, are you guys going to beat the streets? Are you going to have sit-ins? Are you going to are you going to lobby and you're going to you're going to camp in your district attorney's office locally? Are you going to camp in your local councilman's office? Are you guys going to shut down local businesses until they do something? Yeah, the answer's probably no. But that's what that, that's what that is what some of us are doing. You see, people say that they they want to see action taken. Well, there there is action being taken by some of us. But that's you see that's what people don't understand. Ninety percent of the people in the freedom movement are all sitting there with a thumb up their crack, going, "Well, I want to see you do something." Well, we are. There are lots of people doing stuff. I'm doing stuff. Charlie's doing stuff. Smart Scarecrow's doing stuff. People in the chat room are doing stuff. People you don't even know are doing stuff. Okay, we're 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 we're, we're talking to officials. We're training individuals. There is food and communities being prepared. Whether you know, I can't come to your neighborhood and do it. If you have the money to come to my neighborhood on your own and join and take part, hey, I, the, 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 you know, you'll go through a vetting process, but it, the, the reality is there for you. Now, the whole idea of you not doing it in your own community and you not taking action on your own, waiting to see what Superman's going to fly in the door, and, you know, oh, we, we're going to wait and we're going to see if Eric Lovely's successful. And if he's successful, we're going to all pile on and that's going to be the wagon we're going to take. Well, bandwagon patriot, just as the quote goes, you will be few and far between as the blood droplets hit the ground, but you will stand in the sunshine, in the sunshine and deban your trophy upon our day of victory. John Adams. Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for it. Well, Eric, here's the deal. 
gun bans coming, gun legislation's coming. There is going to be, you know, I said to you a few weeks ago, I think, uh, uh, last time we talked about uh, some of this legislation that was that was in the works, that that I truly, the, the vast majority, especially in, uh, you know, the NASCAR uh, dads in the South, this 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 uh, issue is going to force a lot of people to to take a good hard look at where we sit in the uh, United States of America. The, this issue is going to raise so many more hackles than the banking, the boring financial bank issue uh, that has uh, dominated uh, this this uh, country for the last uh, you know hundred years. However, for the last four or five years, this massive crime that occurred, most people could care less about as long as they still had a job to go to. This one issue, gun control and uh, government taking those guns, I think is going to uh, show exactly why we have this never-ending uh, police state, this never-ending security industrial complex uh, that has uh, manifested across the country. Eric? <laughs> yeah, you know... You, I, just, you, know I mean, you, you disagree? Yeah, there's a lot more people no. that... I agree. I I, I, I I do agree. I agree that there are, well, you know, we'll include everybody. I agree that there are a lot of people that are awake. I agree that there are a lot of people who, who, who are looking at the information. But, you know, I, I, there, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know what to say, you know, and people call me a dreamer. And the only difference between a dream, okay, and achieving your dream is action. That's all it's ever been. That's the only difference. Dreamers don't ever get anything because they're always dreaming. It is entrepreneurs who take action. It is people who take the mantle upon themselves, whether they like it or not, and they charge forward into the breach. Those are the people that achieve gene that 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 achieve dreams. Those are the people that live way up there in the sparkly sky that you think you can never reach. It's simply because they take action upon their dream and they have faith and 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 they actually believe. In, in, in the things that they're talking about and, and whether or not again in the nuts and bolts you know it, it, I think it's an opinion you know we both make opinions about what we see we both make an opinions as to the type of people we're dealing with what actions will be taken the only guarantees I can tell you that uh, that I, I think are guarantees okay this is my personal opinion is that I understand the enemy okay I, I know that it, that they're going to continue to push forward they're going to be relentless they are not going to surrender they're not going to go away because you asked them to. The, on, on, it, according to their paperwork, they already own everything, including you and your children and everything you call yours. Okay? And they have an armed police force and an armed SWAT team and an armed FBI and an armed IRS pointing all of their guns at you saying, oh, you own everything? How about you relook at the paperwork? <laughs> Okay, and you have people who are more willing to trade their soul for a paycheck. We're willing to say, I'm just doing my job. All right, I know what happened, Eric. You dropped off there. Eric, love you. Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, your passion tonight. Guys, stay tuned. We're going to be back here in just a few minutes. Uh, Kristen Megan is our guest for hour number two. We'll be back in just a few. 